built Olympic Stadium in Berlin is filled to capacity as Hitler arrives to preside at the opening ceremony of the 11th modern Olympiad. A hundred thousand spectators are present. They see the charming incident of the presentation of a bouquet to the Führer by a little girl who meets him on his way to his box. They see the great parade of athletes from all over the world, the British standard being carried by Jack Beresford. Following its practice at previous Olympic meetings, the team salutes not with the outstretched hand, but with the eyes right of British tradition. Past Hitler, the 53 teams march. A contingent from India, picturesque in their turbans. And from the other side of the world, the Australian team. All the finest athletes on earth are here to battle for the highest honours in the world of sport. The solemn Olympic oath is taken by a German, Rudolf Ismayer, on behalf of the 5,000 competitors and officials. Then Hitler declares the Games open. Now 30,000 carrier pigeons are released. They are the doves of peace, symbolizing the comradeship that exists among all nations in the athletic arena. But most impressive incident in an impressive day is the arrival of the last of 3,000 runners who have brought the sacred flame 1,800 miles through seven different countries from Greece. A stalwart, fair-haired German carries the torch to the brazier and lights the fire. At last, the perfectly organized ceremonies are over and the game has begun. In the 100 meters, Jesse Owens on the far side has already beaten the world record in his first heat, though the time was disallowed as the wind was behind him. And running like the wind, he wins the final and equals the world record of 10.3 seconds. There's a big field in the 10,000 meters with a fast pace set by Murakoso of Japan who leads most of the way. India can't catch him, but he's reckoned without the Finns, three of whom come up in a blazing finish to take the first three places. It looks as if it's going to be a dead heat, but the winner is Salminen on the far side. Amid tremendous excitement at Berlin, Great Britain scores its first Olympic victory when Harold Whitlock arrives alone ahead of the field in the 50-kilometer walk and sets a new Olympic record of 4 hours, 30 minutes, 41 seconds. <laughs> So the 32-year-old Londoner is crowned and the Union Jack flies from the centre start. There are hopes of another British win in the 110-metre hurdle if Finlay, number 270, can beat the American Towns, number 762, and the American Negro Pollard. <laughs> It's a terrific race, and Findlay, hurdling at his best, gets ahead of Pollard in the last few strides, but can't catch Towns, who sets a new world record of 14.1. There are several old rivals in the 1500 metres. Glenn Cunningham, number 746, who takes the lead, Nye of Sweden, number 573, and Jack Lovelock, the New Zealander, in dark vest and shorts. It will be remembered that Lovelock beat Cunningham in the mile of the century race, when he held his sprint for the last 60 yards. Today, to everyone's surprise, he goes ahead 300 yards from the end, having passed Cunningham and Beccaria of Italy. Running with perfect grace and power, Lovelock continues to accelerate to win one of the greatest races ever run, five yards ahead of the American, in the new world record time of 3 minutes 47.8 seconds. So he crowns his career with a wonderful Olympic triumph. Spectators in Berlin were treated to a monster physical culture display between events. 12,500 Berlin schoolchildren going through their routine with fine precision. The 400 meters women's relay with America, Great Britain, Canada and Germany as close rivals for the prize. Germany gained the lead, but a fumbled baton change put them out of the running. In the final stage, Barbara Burke couldn't hold the American sprinter Helen Stevens, who won for the States by about six yards. How these women can run. The deciding match of the polo tournament was between Britain, dark jerseys, and the Argentines, who, mounted on exceptionally fast ponies, proved superior throughout the game, and won by the overwhelming score of 11 goals to none. 
56 runners started in the 42-kilometre marathon, about 26 miles, which followed a course from the Olympic Stadium through Grunewald over part of the Avis motor track and back to the stadium. Son of Japan, who took the lead at 30 kilometres, ran in amazingly fresh to win in a new Olympic record time, with Harper, the Sheffield bricklayer, only 1 minute 40 seconds behind. Swimming, the 100 metre freestyle race for women, was a thrilling event, with Miss Mastenberg of Holland in the fifth lane just beating Miss Campbell of the Argentine. Diving champions of all nations demonstrated their art. Olympic diving really is a bit different, isn't it? Now for the 1600 metre relay. Fred Wolf ran the first lap for Britain and kept it in striking distance of Canada and America. In the last lap, Bill Roberts sent Godfrey Brown away with a good start, and the Cambridge man held his position, spurted halfway round, and gave Britain its first track running title. A brilliant victory by Brown, Wolf, Rampling, and Roberts for the Union Jack. Britain won a last minute victory in the Olympics when Beresford and Southwood, stroke, gave a fine display of oarsmanship to beat Germany in the double skulls at Grinnell. It was a remarkable triumph for Beresford, who is 37 years old, has competed in five Olympiads, and has now won his third Olympic gold medal. <laughs> then the closing ceremony in the floodlit stadium, Berlin. Reels and ribbons were attached to flags of competing nations. The official Olympic flag was lowered, and the standards paraded in the arena. Finally, the Olympic flame, which has burnt throughout the meeting, dies out, and the games are over. <laughs>